Welcome Balboa Park Committee members, members of the public and city staff to the Balboa Park Committee meeting. I am Balboa Park District Manager Johnny Cho, and I would like to share meeting procedures with you before we begin the meeting. The Balboa Park Committee will be conducted pursuant to the provisions of California Executive Order 2920, which suspends certain requirements of the Ralph M. Brown Act. In the interest of public health and safety, board members will participate in meetings by Zoom webinar. As such, and in accordance with the executive order, no members of the public will attend the meetings, but instead view and join the meeting proceeding via the link listed on the agenda and website. In lieu of in-person attendance, members of the public may submit their comments via public comment web form or join the live meeting webinar. The instructions for joining the meetings were provided in advance on the website and the agenda. Members of the public wishing to address the board in writing must submit a web form prior to the meeting. For those wishing to speak during the live meeting webinar, when the item on which you wish to speak is called, press star nine on your phone keypad or press the raise hand icon on your computer. When prompted, please state your name for the record and provide your public comment. You will have time allotted by the chair to provide your comment. Once your time has ended, your microphone will be muted. Persuading to the to open meeting laws, no discussion or action other than a referral shall be taken by the board on anything brought forth under non-agenda public comment. Now we'll turn the meeting over to Double Park Committee Chairperson Molly Chase. Thanks so much, Johnny. We're going to take a quick roll call to confirm attendance when I call your name. Please unmute yourself and say present. Howard Blackson. Present. Dang Nguyen. Present. Molly Chase is present. Allison Soros. Out of the country. Brer Marsh. Present. Victoria Cran. William Aaron. Present. Micah Parzen. Present. Makeda Cheatham. Makeda, I don't know if we could hear you, but it looks like she registered a present. Okay. I'm still having, in, I can't hear you, but I'm not sure if it's if else. Uh, we'll go on to Sarah Daw is here tonight. Welcome back, Sarah. Thank you, Molly. Catherine Johnston. Here, present. And Chris Eddy. Present. Thank you. Your attendance has been noted. As a reminder, um, to comply with the Brown Act, please verbalize all motions and seconds. Uh, first, we'll start with the approval of the minutes. We will begin uh, approval of minutes for December 8th, 2022. Is there a motion? A motion to approve. Motion by William. Do we have a second? A second. Second by Chris. Victor will call the roll. Molly? Katherine Johnson? Yes. Howard Blackson? Yes. Deng Nguyen? Yes. Briar Marsh? Yes. Victoria Curran? William Aaron Jr.? Yes. Micah Parson? Yes. Makeda Cheatham? No, Sarah Daw? Yes. Chris Eddy? Yes. Great. That motion passes. We'll uh, move, start with non agenda public comment and then move to committee member comment. Do we have any non agenda public comment this evening? All right, I see your hand raised. Yes. Uh, thank you. Um, I think this is the right time. Christina, you can nod yes or no. Uh, okay, good. This is the right. Um, last month, uh, last meeting, we talked about, we had a presentation of the design review committee, uh, subcommittee um, presentation that we all felt needed uh, a little more work uh, back at the drawing board, pun intended. And, um, <laughs> and um, I've, I, uh, I, I, I understand that our um, bylaws were uh, being uh, amended uh, and, and 
I think January of 2020. And that discussion happened before I joined, but right before I joined. And I think that that, I think that our, the ability for us to discuss and a professional uh, ad hoc advisory committee that has outside experts to help early in the process before it comes to our board to assist staff to represent board members and 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 the community and, and the professional community as well um, can be uh, used can be done in our bylaws uh, that are were being discussed about uh, being amended and the amendment that I would like to make and um, is that. Um, the draft bylaws we have reflect what uh, the San Diego, what our San Diego Municipal Code, uh, um, it's uh, the Parks and Rec Advisory Board, it's, it's, it's um, section 26.30 and uh, it's subsection one, three, where it says, this is for, there's, there is rules for the uh, Municipal Code for um, uh, Balboa Park Committee, but the Balboa Park Committee is under the same a set of rules as the Parks and Rec Committee, which is part of Parks and Recreation Advisory Boards, which also includes Mission Bay Advisory Board and, and the Golf Course Advisory Boards. And then anyway, section three of the Bible, of the uh, of the Parks and Rec Board, it says, the chair with the advice of the board shall appoint standing and ad hoc committees concerned with specific problems or areas of interest to the board. These committees shall be composed of board members, fine, um, augmented by other representative citizens appointed by the board chair. So the other representative citizens would be uh, the type of, of, of uh, design professionals that we're talking about. And then where um, the um, point that I wanted to make about the design professionals that we're talking about, darn it, uh, be, I'm sorry, I've got, I've got to find my documents here and I want the wrong documents. No, it's over here. Um, is that um, um, is that we don't have to um, our our uh, the bylaws uh, says that um, the, the, the the municipal code says that our committee shall adopt rules that are consistent with the law for the government and the business and procedures. So this ad hoc committee is consistent with the law uh, and, and the parks and recs. So therefore, it should be consistent with us. And then um, our section says. And this is at the very beginning of our bylaws, the Balboa Park Committee bylaws. Um, um, Article five, um, um, sorry, um, section three, qualifications. It says each members of our, of our committee should possess expertise or demonstration, experience or knowledge in one, of the, one or more of the following areas, parks and rec, architecture, design, general finance, municipal finance, uh, planning, biology, environmental science, resource management, protection, construction management, historic preservation, tourists, arts, and culture. Um, therefore, I'm set, my point is that we have committee members with these expertise who can be augmented in an ad hoc committee, which is allowed in our municipal code that we can adopt uh, specifically with a new bylaw uh, amendment. And that's my presentation. <laughs> whatever that was <laughs> thank yeah, you for listening thank it's not you, a, it's not an action item it's not an action item um this is a non-agenda public uh, non-agenda committee thing so i want to put this out there for so i have to mute you 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 passed your time yeah and thanks hard it's not agenda so thank you for your comment do we have any other committee member comments before we open it up to non-agenda public comment yeah i have four. First one is uh clifford sorry I said for com committee member, it looks like Chris. Oh, sorry. Uh, and then we'll move on to non-agenda public comments since Howard started. Uh, just a couple of, uh, one. one's a question, one, and we'll have to get it answered later. And one's just a comment. So the question is, there was a lot of discussion last time around and it, it all sort of circled back to the city attorney having to um, look at whether or not this could work or not work. And so I don't know if, if this is a, the city attorney's interpretation or if we still have to go through that process. So that's just one thought. And, and then the other thought is, you know, to me, ad hoc is a group that's put together to um, analyze a particular uh, situation or subject. And um, 
So there's a difference between sort of a standing committee or subcommittee and ad hoc. And so, uh, you know, if the language includes ad hoc, we might need a, a better interpretation of what ad hoc committees are intended for, because depending on the subject matter, um, it might include, aside from people in our committee, it might include other people who wouldn't necessarily be involved in the last subject. So you may have a, a different group in your ad hoc committee because the subject matter is entirely different. Those are my thoughts. Thank you. Seeing no other committee member comments, we will move on to non-agenda public comment. Johnny? Uh, Clifford, you're first. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay, I'm Clifford Weiler, W-E-I-L-E-R. Um, last meeting, I submitted a public comment asking about what happened to the money raised by parking fees during the recent Balboa Park December nights. Since then, there has been an article in the Times of San Diego about the costly backlog of Balboa Park needs. The city is attempting to find additional revenues to sources to pay for various council approvals, such as the Astry property. And there is no indication on this meeting's agenda that your committee will be looking into this matter of where did the parking fees go? And maybe concessionaire fees is also an issue. I am hopeful that someone on your committee addresses this issue and request now. As mentioned in the Brown Act, Government Code Section 54954.2A3, that's 54954.2A3, as amended, it says in part, and I quote, members of, of a legislative body or its staff may briefly respond to statements made or questions posed by persons exercising their public testimony rights under section 54954.3. In addition, on their own initiative or in response to questions posed by the public, a member of a legislative body or its staff may ask a question for clarification, make a brief announcement, or make a brief report on his or her own activities. Furthermore, a member of a legislative body or a body, the body itself, subject to the rules or procedures of the legislative body, may provide a reference to staff or other resources for factual information, request staff to report back to the body at a subsequent meeting concerning any matter, or take action to direct staff to place a matter of business on a future agenda. Now, I know your, your preamble says you can't talk about this, but in the context of ad hoc committees, I would hope that somebody would want to look into where the December night's money and maybe concessionaire monies went because you're the Balboa Park Committee. That's a lot of money that you could use for the projects that you want to implement. And you're allowed to talk about it to the extent now where you can direct somebody to look into it or even talk about an ad hoc committee um, or refer to it uh, for an agenda item in the next meeting. And the reason... Well, I won't go on. Um, the reason why that aspect of the Brown Act is never mentioned is because it's in a different section from the public comment section. And I knew about it because I represented public school districts for over 40 years and I knew about the Brown Act. So you can talk about it and refer as I've read. Thank you very much. Next, I have uh, Renee Smith. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, thank you. Madam Chair, committee members, city staff, fellow residents. I again approach this committee regarding the suggestion I have been making for over six months that the Jacarunda Spur between Pershing Drive and Jacarunda Drive remain closed. I'm fully aware of the fact that Pershing Drive was presented to this committee years ago, and this idea was not discussed at that time, and that work is ongoing now and that any changes will add time and cost. That's unfortunate, but I suggest that we not let the imminent stand in the way of the important. I won't take more of your time reiterating what I've said before about this once in decades opportunity to create an environment that will assist in reactivating this entire area of Moreland Field. Please do not forego this opportunity. I would also note that the North Park Planning Committee created a letter in support of this request which should be available to this committee. I hope that the committee will consider this for referral at a near-term near future information or workshop item. And I thank you sincerely. And next is Danielle Lehman. 
Um, good evening. I hope everyone can hear me. Um, I have several items. Hopefully I'll stay within my two minutes. Um, first, I would like to thank city staff um, who helped uh, the HPR cottages with an uh, electric emergency we had during December nights and a recent plumbing issue we had at the Hall of Nations. City staff is awesome. Number two, uh, I would like to let you know that we had a safety and security meeting this morning. Um, a few of our officers who've been with the Balboa Park team at SDPD are moving along and we have a new uh, SDPD officer joining us. Um, uh, our Sergeant uh, Hamby uh, was able to meet with Chief Ranger and new Senior Ranger in Balboa Park and they had a good discussion of regarding encampments and vendors. And the multicultural division of SDPD was there, and they gave us a phone number. If there is ever a time when you need to report a hate crime, um, the number is 619-515-2714. And they also reminded us to keep using the Get It Done app for uh, reporting graffiti and encampments. And... Then um, some good news. We are starting back with our lawn programs. January just has one, but it is a two-day event. It's Chinese New Year on the 21st and 22nd of January from 11 to 5. Uh, lots of people are going to be showing up for that. And lastly, um, I did have a question again about when hybrid meetings might be starting uh, instead of uh, always on Zoom. Thank you very much. Okay, I have Alexander Dumas. Uh, hi, hello. My name is uh, Alexander Dumas. Uh, I form part of ASD at San Diego City College, and my role is uh, Senate President. Uh, I came here to talk about action item 101. And um, yeah, so I'm interested in it because it's going to bring more parking lots. and. So Alexander, this is public comment. You're talking about agenda comment. Uh, you can raise your hand during the one when that item comes up. Okay. It, you you are speaking on item 101, correct? Correct. Okay. So when that comes up, that's that's when we'll we'll let you talk again. Okay. Thank you. That's that's all the hand raises I have. Perfect. Thanks, Johnny. That concludes the non-agenda public comment. With that, um, I do not have anything for my chair's report this evening. We'll move on. I see Cody is here for city staff reports. Cody, welcome. Hi, everyone. <clears throat> Hope you enjoy the holidays and are having uh, a happy new year. Um, so just a few updates. Um, I mentioned last time that um, we have um, officially started a new council term. Um, there's one new council member and all of the committees and agency assignments have been redone. So um, council member Whippern does remain chair of the city's audit committee and a member of the land use and housing committee. Um, he's also a member of the sort of new um, community neighborhood and, and neighborhood services committee. Um, they split public safety and livable neighborhoods into two different committees now to um, ensure that there was time to handle all of those issues. Um, but of course, most of those issues and other committees will still come to council. Um, and then uh, as far as other agencies, uh, the council member is continuing to serve as an alternate to the mayor on the League of Cities, um, as an alternate to council president on the San Diego Consortium Policy Board, also known as the Workforce Partnership. Um, newly, he is now officially a full um, member of the MTS Board of Directors. He previously served as alternate to the mayor um, he's a representative on the Sandag Regional Planning Committee, and then now the city's voting member on the Local Agency Formation Commission, also known as LAFCO. Um, and then again, I we've talked about this for a bit, but um, we do have um, 
the deadline coming up for the city council members to update their budget priority memos and send those to the IBA. That is due next Friday the 13th. We've already heard from a lot of folks and organizations on here, but if you have any last minute things that you would like to reach out to us about, please do so. Um, and then lastly, um, I think she's on here. Um, my colleague, uh, I just raised her hand, Emily Bonner um, is going to be uh, joining, uh, joining me um, in uh, handling Balboa Park for our office, um, primarily taking on uh, constituent and community issues related to Balboa Park, although I will still be here, of course. Um, I don't know if maybe uh, she might be given an opportunity to introduce herself briefly. I don't think she's a panelist. Yeah, I do seem to have the ability to speak. Uh, okay. I, I just wanted to say my name is Emily Bonner. I work for Councilmember Whitburn alongside Cody Vieira. I'm very excited to be taking more of a role in Balboa Park. Um, and please, if you have any constituent issues around Balboa Park, uh, let me know. Um, I can send my email to the secretary and have it shared after the meeting so that you all have my direct line. Perfect. And thank you, Emily. I get the pleasure of working with Emily during the day and she's wonderful and responsive. And Cody, we're excited you're not leaving us, but we are also <laughs> looking forward to working with Emily. So thanks so much and welcome, Emily. I appreciate the introduction. Um, up next, uh, Christina. Yes, thank you, uh, Chair Chase. Uh, good after, or good evening, rather, and Happy New Year to everybody. Thank you all for being here. Um, just a few uh, updates to share on behalf of my team. Welcome, Emily, and uh, thank you, Cody, for all that you do for Balboa Park. Um, as many of you know, uh, the city is moving forward with the implementation of a redesign of uh, Park Boulevard, and that is happening imminently. Initially, uh, the plan to begin that work was going to be January 18th, but the transportation department is in the process of revising uh, the implementation schedule just slightly to accommodate things like weather and, um, and a few other uh, minor scope of work changes. So the uh, the new scope of work in, in the schedule will be uh, distributed um, by me and by others at the city, including the communications department who intends on sending out a, a press release uh, over the next several days, if you have any questions about that, once you receive information from me, please let me know and we can work together on, um, on any, any concerns or questions that you may have. But there will be a modified schedule coming out um, within the next few days, so please uh, stay tuned. Uh, as we've shared uh, last month as well, the city's facilities division is moving forward with a uh, restoration, exterior restoration of the Palisades building, otherwise known as the recital hall. Uh, we are moving forward with that mid January. So that's coming up in about a week or so. We will start to initiate some of that work and then the entire building will get new plaster and paint. So we're very excited um, to continue all of the uh, restoration work that's happening in the Palisades area. And we thank the facilities division for prioritizing that work. Uh, the, we continue to work, uh, our assets uh, management division, uh, as well as others, continue to work on uh, the work associated with the Casa del Prado. Uh, as we reach milestones, we will continue to update this community group as we know all of you are very interested in how we intend on using uh, the generous grant dollars that we received. So we will make sure that you're up to date on that. Uh, we wanted to let you all know that the Park and Recreation Department held a very successful Breakfast with Santa event on December 17th, and we had over 150 guests. So for those of you that were able to join us, and thank you to uh, staff for everything that you did to make this event successful. Um, it was great to have everybody in Balboa Park to celebrate the holidays. Uh, BPAC, uh, or the Balboa Park Activity Center, will be closed to resurface the flooring there, which is another great, um, great piece of news for us that we're excited to be able to redo uh, the floors there. And that begins on January 17th, and it likely will reopen uh, to community groups and to the public generally January 30th. If anything changes on that, we will make sure to let you all know. And finally, we will also be moving forward with uh, some renovation work at Morley Field that will begin on January 17th. 
week. So we will make sure to keep you aware of that as well. If anyone has any questions or anything, please feel free to let us know. And that is all for us. Back to you, Molly. Great. Thank you so much, Christina. It sounds like that covers the updates for all of the Park and Rec staff unless, yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Up next, we have reports from our nonprofit partners and Elizabeth Babcock or any representative from Forever Balboa Park, if you're here this evening. I don't see anybody, but if they could raise their hand, I'll let them talk. Perfect. If anyone is here um, while we're waiting from Bubble Park Cultural Partnership, Peter Kaminsky, or any other members of the Cultural Partnership that would like to say something. Oh, you got someone. Peter. Seeing none, if anyone, oh, there's uh, Peter. P Peter's hand ready. Good evening, Chair Chase and members of the committee. My name is Peter Kamiski, representing the cultural organisations within the park. First, I am thrilled to let you know that this afternoon, the cultural partnership team completed a three hour review session for the work being undertaken by the group of six national and local consultant orgs under the banner of Open Box for the experience plan. I'm extremely excited by the possibility for this plan and very much look forward to its integration into the Parks and Rec framework for the future. Together with our citywide advisory board, we will be working this quarter on the rollout for the plan, and I'll make sure you're invited to the rollout and also provide the opportunity for this committee to receive that report. Second, as Cody mentioned, with the new year, we move even closer to the rollout of the Mayor's budget for FY24. This month, council members will release their second of three budget memos. There are two elements for which I seek your help and the help of those listening to this meeting. The first element, of course, is to support the Parks and Rec budget and the continued staffing and programs necessary to make Balboa Park safe, secure and maintained and, of course, beautiful for our guests. This is something only the city can do, and we need to ensure that the cost to deliver that continues to be communicated at City Hall. Second, I'm thrilled to let you know that all council members have expressed their support for achieving the funding for Penny for Arts and Culture within three years. This is the funding that allows arts and culture programming throughout our city, throughout our community, by many organisations, including those in the park. I ask that you communicate with your council member and the mayor to fund the Commission for Arts and Culture to at least 7% of transient occupancy tax, TOT, to move towards the commitment to achieving penny for arts and culture by FY26. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, Peter. Um, and for the additional plug about the budget process, very helpful. Uh, if Ross Porter is here from Community of 100, and if Ross is not here, if Steve Stopper is here from Save Starlight. I see Steve. Hello. Um, happy New Year, everyone. Uh, we had a very nice New Year on the first day of the year. There was a nice article about the Starlight Bowl raising the awareness to the public about the situation there. And we actually right now this week have a proposal for a lease in front of city council. We have to go through those processes. Really excited though about the future. Uh, we have an excited in, you know, supporter uh, at the ready once we get this lease in place. And then we have other, other moves to make. The other thing I wanted to talk about was to mention Welton Jones. Uh, this was a mentor of mine, well-known park uh, advocate. He passed away. And I believe we're going to have uh, something uh, in his uh, memory in front of a starlight on the 28th. So that's in the work. So that's going on too. But life goes on and hopefully starlight will. Thank you, Steve. I don't see um, anyone from Forever Bubble Park or Fave 100. So with that, we will move on. Um, we do have one item on the consent agenda this evening, and it was actually meant to be listed on, on the adoption agenda item. It's item 101, bubble uh, drive redesign, which I'm sure many of us do want to hear. Um, do we have a motion to move item 101 to the adoption agenda from the consent agenda? A motion to move that to uh, action item. And I, will, oops, oh, and a second by Will. I will, I will second. Thank you. Um, Victor, if you could call the roll. Molly Chase. Yes. Catherine Justin. Yes. Howard Blackson. 
Yes. Deng Nguyen. Brian Marsh. Yes. Uh, William Aaron Jr. Yes. Micah Parson. Yes. Makeda Cheatham. Yes. Sarah Da. Yes. Chris Eddy. Yes. Dang Nguyen. It passes. Great. Thank you, everyone. With that, we will take up uh, Bubble Park Drive or Bubble Drive Redesign. Phil, Trump, and Claudia are here to present the item. Yeah, thank you, Chair Chase um, and members of the Balboa Park Committee. Um, thanks for having us tonight. I'm going to go ahead and share the screen with the PowerPoint. So let me know. I'm going to go ahead and put it in presentation mode. Can you let me know which um, which screen is showing? Is it the full version or the 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 one that has like the inset with next it's slide? I think it's presentation version, not the full screen version. Okay, so I'm going to. I get that. Sorry for the delay. So here I swapped the views. Is that better? Is that the full screen? Yep. All right. Excellent. Okay. Um, wonderful. Well, thanks so much for having us. So um, I'm Phil Trump, Program Manager in the Sustainability and Mobility Department with the City of San Diego. So I'm joined tonight as Chair Chase mentioned by Claudia <laughs> Brasuela, Senior Traffic Engineer also with the Sustainability and Mobility Department. So we're here to uh, uh, seek your adoption of the improvement proposal for Balboa Drive. So I have a, a little bit of context and then I'll pass it off uh, to Claudia. Um, so uh, we've really been working hard to take a closer look at, at mobility uh, all around the park. And that's kind of in concert both with Sustainability and Mobility Department and, and other departments at the City of San Diego. Um, and really with a, a focus on how Balboa Park um, is serving all users and being served by it for and, and, and providing mobility options for all users. Um, several projects have, as you know, have already been completed, providing more access uh, to the park, uh, such as uh, ped crossing improvements on 6th Avenue on this side. Oh, let's see, I'll get my cursor right here on the right screen. 6th Avenue um, improved pedestrian connections and curb ramps uh, throughout the park uh, for access by all users. Uh, with ADA, ADA accessible improvements. Uh, new bike facilities along 4th and 5th Avenue adjacent to the park on the west side with those cycle tracks. Um, and new bikeway and transit improvements coming online soon uh, with uh, the, the Park Boulevard improvements um, on the, uh, on the eastern, side, eastern side of the park. Um, in addition to more scooter crowds and more bike parking, uh, which we'll talk about later tonight as part of item 501, um, and which will make it easier for cyclists and micromobility users to enjoy the park. Uh, not to mention the roundabouts uh, that were, or roundabout with, that was recently put in at Florida up by Morley Field here, um, and uh, Pershing Drive bike lanes uh, that are underway. Uh, so all of this will provide more ways for people to access the park. And today we're here to present one more mobility improvement within the park, specifically along uh, Balboa Drive, so more on the Western uh, portion of the park here. Um, and uh, as I mentioned, uh, with me is Claudia Brasuela, Senior Traffic Engineer, uh, to review the proposed uh, Balboa Drive improvement. So I'll go ahead and pass it all over to uh, Claudia. Thanks, Phil. So Balboa Drive is located on the west side of Balboa Park, um, and that will have an overlay um, very similar to what Park Boulevard um, and the the bike and um, transit improvements um, we'll have. Uh, the slurry seal project is number 2323. Uh, it's, er, it's currently anticipated to begin construction in the summer of this year and to be completed by the fall of this year. And so we see this as an opportunity to continue to focus on the mobility system for the park and look for ways to offset some of the parking that's going to be removed near, um, near the park. Um, as Phil had mentioned, um, for along Park Boulevard for the bike and transit improvements. Um, we also see this as an opportunity to address accessibility needs for people, to, for persons with disabilities, as well as access for cyclists and micromobility users. Next slide, please. 
So the next three slides we've shared in October with the group. Um, so it, it may be a little repetitive, but um, Balboa Drive from Yupis Street to the southern portion uh, where it, it has a hairpin turn and turns into 8th Avenue currently has a total of about 446 parking spaces. It has two southbound travel lanes, parallel parkings um, available on both sides of the road, um, and southbound cyclists can ride in the travel lanes with the vehicles. Next slide, please. <laughs> Here are some pictures taken at different locations along Balboa Drive, just to familiarize um, everyone with the roadway in question. Thank you, next slide. So looking at the design opportunity for Balboa Drive, we looked at the traffic flows and amount of cars along the roadway. Um, while there are two travel lanes, they're not heavily utilized and we feel that we can reduce it to one lane and not impact the user's experience along this roadway. Uh, we were asked by this committee to look for more parking opportunities with the loss of um, you know, near the park, and we determined that angle parking conversion is an option along one side of this of this roadway. Uh, we selected the west side as it provides for more parking space gain. Um, it's also closer to amenities like the playground, the bathrooms, and the chess club. Um, so what's shown on the slide is reverse angle parking, which I feel has many safety benefits for families visiting the park. Uh, benefits of reverse angle parking are that those with kids will appreciate that when parking in um, one of these park stalls, the doors open away from the street. And so with the potential for smaller children visiting this part of the park, um, you know, if they decide to run, they're no longer running into the street. They're running um, towards the lawn area away from, from the street. Um, in addition, when pulling out of a parking space with reverse angle parking, the driver has better visibility of um, southbound vehicles and cyclists before entering the road. Just a matter of looking to your left and making sure that there's, um, you know, a gap for you to go ahead and um, exit the parking space rather than looking behind your shoulder and, um, you know, having that difficulty there. So the conversion of parking from parallel to angle parking along the west side would increase parking from 446 to 575 parking spaces. That's a net gain of 129 parking spaces with this proposal. Next slide, please. Uh, this slide shows an aerial or bird's eye view of what the reverse angle parking would look like along Balboa Drive and um, pretty much what, what the proposal is. Um, you can see, um, vehicles traveling, maintaining the one-way travel southbound, um, share roads to demarcate that that space is shared between the vehicles and the cyclists, and then the parallel parking would, would remain on the east side. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. As we found with Park Boulevard, there's some historical red curbs throughout the park, um, and with this slurry project, it provided us the opportunity to uh, take another look at those red curbs. Um, and the different curb space that's needed along this roadway. So in some locations, we've identified um, areas for, for reduction of the red curbs, and that can result in additional parking spaces as well. Um, looks like currently it can increase um, parking spaces by approximately 25 to 30 parking spaces with um, these red curb reductions. And we've also looked for opportunities for increasing accessible parking spaces in the area, um, as well as access to the park for non-parkers via scooters and bikes. Next slide, please. So as we look at Balboa Drive and the potential to create these additional parking spaces, we worked with our ADA team to identify locations for accessible parking and making um, to make sure that we're meeting our ADA um, needs and requirements. And so accessible parking spaces are going to be located near curb ramps and pathways, serving the most used public facilities and active lawn areas. And our ADA team has identified more than 18 accessible parking spaces uh, for this portion of the park. Uh, Phil, next slide. <laughs> right. Uh, so to wrap up, the, the slurry seal project would start this summer, as Claudia mentioned. Uh, we'll continue to work with the ADA team to ensure that accessibility needs are being met as final designs are drawn up. Um, along with continued collaboration, I would say with uh, the Transportation Department, the City of San Diego, as well as the Parks and Rec Department for seamless implementation. Uh, so once these projects are implemented, we can continue to look at parking demand and utilization around the park, including 
Balboa Drive. Um, and uh, we also found ways to better connect the corridor to bike parking and micro mobility crowds in the park. And that's, that's part of item 501, which is also on your agenda tonight. Um, so with that, I'll hand it back to, uh, uh, to Chair Chase and uh, happy to answer any questions. Thank you so much to city staff. Uh, we will first take public comment. Do we have, looks like Alexander and Peter are both Yeah, there. I have four platforms I'm gonna read first. Thanks. And then we'll, we'll, we'll call the uh, public. Um, First web form I have is from John Percy. Um, as a result of the meeting with Christina Chadwick of the Park and Rec, Park and Rec Department and Phil Trom and Claudia Brazella of the Department of Sustainability and Mobility on December 6, uh, 2022, the Project Review Committee of the Bankers Hill Committee Group feels that there is not adequate information or research done to indicate that there is a need for more parking spaces on the West Mesa. In fact, the research that was done in 2014 and 2022 indicates that current parking spaces are underutilized and that additional spaces are not warranted. Until more complete study is done by the city, we feel that there should not be any additional parking spaces added to the West Mesa. The BHCG slash PRC would like parks and recreation to consider the following when Balboa Drive is repaved in 2023. One, keep the parking layout as is with parallel parking on both sides of Balboa Drive with, with lowering the speed limit to 25, from 25 to 15 miles an hour. The lowering of the speed will make it safer for people using drive lines for biking, roller skating, and jogging. Consider installing diagonal parking on the west side of Bubble Drive with no parking on, um, it was cut off. Um, next is, hold on one second. So Bruce Demon, um, the design layout, located, location, and size of parking areas in parks is extremely important in the overall design feeling of a park. The West Mesa is identified in the master plan as an area of leisure, not a parking lot. I would like to hear from the park designer or Vicky Estrada, who worked on Balboa Park master plan as to whether they think the current proposal is well designed and would be an asset for the West Mesa. Engineer design, designing our parks, even parking areas is a mistake. I also think the committee should know if the individuals that worked on the recent parking and circulation study have been consulted as to the need of more parking in the park, especially on the West Mesa. Since the sustainability and mobility department has not been able to confirm with the study that additional parking is currently needed on the west side. Um, the Vahan Hartuni, Boardswork Commission's Bob Park Committee meeting. Oh, sorry. Uh, his comment is when you hang out at the Pan America Plaza or around the Panama Fountain, do you wish you could drive or park your car there again? No, of course not. So it's ludicrous that we're thinking about adding more dangerous forms of parking along Balboa Drive. The park is so much more enjoyable when you worry less about being flattened by two ton vehicles driven by individuals who had their last driving test back in high school. <laughs> I asked the committee members, are you stewards of the park or stewards of the parking spaces? Value the safety and experience of park goers outside of, outside of cars by rejecting the angled parking proposed by Balboa Drive. Thank you. 
And the last one is Will Radigan. I'm right on behalf of the San Diego County Bicycle Coalition for state to state our concerns about the redesign of Balboa Drive. Mayor Todd Gloria administration had made it, has made it, made its uh, commitment to prioritizing class four bikeways very clear in pursuit of both the climate action plan and vision zero, the redesign of Balboa Drive presents an excellent opportunity to build a safe, high comfort, two-way cycle track without removing any parking or needed road capacity. This would attract more bicyclists to the park, both from the recreation and transportation, sacrificing this opportunity to build yet more parking in a park with over 8,000 parking spaces would directly detract from the city's goal of encouraging alternate modes of transportation to Balboa Park. We encourage the city to reconsider this plan and study the possibility of adding bi-directional cycle track along Balboa Drive. Okay, that's all I have for web form. Um, so first one is Alexander Dumas. Hi, how's it going? My name is Alexander Daumas, and I am part of the Associate Student Government at San Diego City College. I am the Senate President. And, uh, you know, uh, we want a city that is walkable, and we are doing so much better, and we can do even, even better. There is already 14 parking lots in Balboa Park. How much more parking does Balboa need? And how do this parking will help achieve our climate goals. You know, the more the, the more parking that you build, the more cars will come, you know? If if we want people to bike or walk or take transit to, to go to different places because it's better for the environment, it's better for a community, uh, then then this is not it, you know? If you make a bike lane, you will bring cyclists. But if you build a parking lot, you will bring cars. And yeah, and I feel we can do we can do good, and we're doing great. And uh, uh, I think we we can do better. And yeah, thank you, and uh, have a great night. Okay, I have Peter Kaminsky. Uh, good evening again, uh, Jason, members of the committee. The members of the Cultural Partnership would like to congratulate the Sustainability and Mobility Department of the City for their work in the planning of the resurfacing for Balboa Drive. I encourage that work to be undertaken as soon as possible. I'm particularly impressed tonight with Claudia's suggestion of reverse angle parking, parking so smart for so many reasons. In addition to the mitigation of the loss of parking spaces on the Balboa Park Park Boulevard resign, this plan also addresses a critical need in additional parking on the west side of the park. I've heard previous discussions that the park has excess parking capacity. This is definitely not the case. I've also heard comments in previous meetings that there have been no independent reports that identifies the need for additional parking. With those comments in mind, the Cultural Partnership has contracted an independent parking capacity study. This study breaks down the park into five zones and examines the demand for parking in those areas as well as for the park as a whole. While this study will be released in conjunction with the rollout of the experience plan, and I very much look forward to sharing that report with you in full, I can share with you tonight that the western side of the park and the institutions within it reports the greatest deficit in parking in required for all of the zones, just based upon the visitation to the cultural organisations within that zone and not even considering the guests of the park who might be coming for the playground, chess club or so many other areas. Adding those visitors who are coming to the park and not visiting an organization, the need would be much higher. I respectfully ask the committee to recommend the plan identified by Sustainability and Mobility Department tonight. Thank you. Next, I have Danielle Lehman. Okay, um, I second the motion that Peter just made. 
Um, I would like to ask a, a question. Maybe the city staff could um, uh, give give some answers uh, in regards to special events on the west side of the park. Um, recently, I saw numbers for the Pride Parade last year was 250,000 over a few days. That's almost as many as December nights. And uh, for some of the parades, such as the St. Patrick's Day Parade, it's like 20,000 people. So my question is, um, is Bevel Park Drive available during those types of very large special events? Because uh, lately we've seen that they direct people to park on the east side of the park and walk over the bridge to the west side of the park for these special events. Thank you. Uh, Nevo Magnesi. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, my name is Nevoa Magnesi. I live about two blocks to Balboa Drive and frequently use it at least two or three times a week in order to access Balboa Park and everything it has to offer. Thank you to city staff for the informative presentation. City staff say that this is an opportunity to offset parking loss on Park Boulevard, but from the perspective of a visitor searching for parking, this makes no sense. Why would someone searching for parking along Park Boulevard drive all the way to University or Robinson Avenue, hit all the traffic lights in Central Hillcrest, and then turn left on 6th Avenue just so they can park along Balboa Drive and then walk 15 to 20 minutes to the Central Mesa. Perhaps a motorist would do this during December nights, but for the remaining 363 days of the year, this justification does not seem reasonable to me. As has been discussed at length, including at this committee, as well as the Bankers Hill Community Group meeting, which is included in the agenda, there is a strong desire among residents, myself included, of whom the Western Mesa is their neighborhood park, that Balboa Drive incorporate greater active transportation features, such as a track for skating, cycling, and jogging, which could be easily implemented as part of the slurry seal. We saw the evidence of the demand for this during the midst of the pandemic, when many folks took advantage of the Balboa Drive closure at the time for use of those activities. The fact that our city's sustainability and mobility department continues to ignore this request and include no new improvements for those users is surprising and disappointing. City staff and committee, please listen to the residents who use Balboa Drive. We don't need a parking lot, we need a park. Thank you. Byron C. Can you hear me? Yes. <clears throat> Excellent. Hey, good evening. My name is Byron Kohi. I am an avid cyclist. I've been biking for years. I bike every day to commute, and I enjoy the new bike lanes we're seeing installed here in San Diego. But to get more people to ride bikes and use micro mobility solutions here, we need to make it comfortable for people to get into biking for the first time. I got three main points here relating to this um, Balboa Park uh, Drive um, change. The first point, biking in a lane shared with the car is a scary experience. Um, I don't have my camera on, but I'm a 200 pound man and I'm still physically unsettled when cars pass by closely. Um, in my opinion, it would be more comfortable for bi bicyclists to not have to share a lane with cars due to the threat of unsafe or even aggressive drivers, um, which do exist. I've been uh, coal rolled in San Diego. I've had trucks fly by me at unsafe speeds and um, I wouldn't want my wife or um, possibly a future daughter to have to worry about that kind of actions. So maybe a Jersey barrier with a separated bike lane could be called for. Second, I noticed during the um, uh, rendering earlier that vehicles looking to park um, on the west side would have to cross the bike lane to back into that reverse angle parking. This is a potential safety hazard for bicyclists traversing these roads. Um, frequently, for example, biking on University Avenue Drivers will cross that bike lane to park or even use the bike lane as temporary parking. This is a blatant safety hazard for bicyclists as the car driver isn't the one who's gonna get injured in a collision, it's the bicyclist at risk. Third, traffic calming measures should be taken to slow the speed of cars. Um, it's unlikely that drivers will consistently stick to speed limits without speed bumps or something similar to that. Um, I'd like to propose a solution why not have a hard divided bike lane, maybe with Jersey barriers or something like that, to keep all the bikes on one side and all the cars on the other side with the parking that they can back into possibly. Um, 
if we need to have parking so that citizens from other San Diego neighborhoods can get into the uh, park, I think we should consider a holistic solution, including public transit, such as Circulate SD's fast bus proposal. But as one of my colleagues here said previously, let's keep it as Balboa Park and not turn it to Balboa parking lot. Thank you. Uh, Katie Baruso. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, my name is Katie. Um, I'm an employee in the park. I work at one of the institutions on the Prado. Um, I've come to this, you know, committee before and have sort of discussed the environmental ramifications of having so many parking lots in the country's largest urban park. Um, parking spaces, as you may or may not know, contribute to um, further flooding due to, you know, the, the loss of topsoil. Um, so instead, I'm going to talk a little bit about safety and my experience as someone who, who walks through the park every single day, including um, last week, I worked every day between Christmas and New Year's in the park, um, the busiest time of the year. Um, I walk from, from where I work on the Prado across the bridge to Bankers Hill. I was cat sitting. Um, even just walking across that bridge, the sidewalk is so full of people that often to pass people, um, you have to step into the road and hope to avoid another car. I've also biked it. Um, when I was biking it, multiple cars passed me um, over the double yellow lines, which as we all know, is illegal. Um, but I bring that up because if you're suggesting, right, that people are going to be parking on Balboa Drive and you want to include or rather increase parking on in part of the park um, that has, as you said at the last meeting discussing this, only a 30% utilization rate of the parking spaces, right? That's why we're not going to paid parking over there because it's only 30% utilization then I think you really need to also think about, you know, if people are parking over there, then they will be pedestrians. They will be making their way over to the main central mesa of the park. Yes, and you want that to be a good experience too. Um, the bridge, the bridge, the Korea Bridge is a really gnarly, sorry, it is called the Korea Bridge. Yeah, it's a really gnarly walking experience, quite frankly. Um, it's often dark at night. Um, it's not a really enjoyable walk. Um, I mean, it's a beautiful walk, but like in terms of basic sort of, anyway, um, I also just wanted to say that, that you know, the, the safest way or the best way to make it safer for children would be to remove cars, not to add a different kind of parking that might make it safer. The cars that are on the roads now are so tall that they cannot see a toddler from the driver's seat unless that toddler is nearly 10 feet away anyway. Um, if you want to, you know, increase the amount of people driving to the park, then by all means do it. Um, but it goes against the city's Vision Zero go goals. It goes against the city's Climate Action Plan goals. And it goes against the Bubba Park Master Plan, which has called for, for 11 years now, for there to be a protected lane on Balboa Drive. Um, I'm in the park every single day. Um, and moving throughout the park is a nightmare. I don't drive. I walk. I bike. I take the bus. Um, and I would really rather the city's sort of safety and environmental committees to be thinking about the safety for everyone once they have to get out of their cars, because that's what we do when we go to Bubble Park. Sorry, your time is up. Trevor Kop Kappa is next. Hello. Uh, I would like to also speak uh, in opposition to the plan to the plan to add angled parking to uh, Balboa Lane, because the as many people have discussed, class four um, separated bike lanes are much safer for bicyclists electing to put angled parking on the other side of a bike lane is electing to make the citizens of San Diego less safe from cars. Uh, it's in opposition to the city's vision zero goals, which we've made little to no progress on since they were enacted. And um, if we wanna protect people from cars, as other people have pointed out, we should get the cars away from the people and doing the current plan proposed by city staff does not do that. Thank you. Anar? Hey, good evening and happy new year. Um, 
So I also oppose adding additional parking to Balboa Drive. Given the city's climate action and vision zero goals, I think converting Balboa Drive into a linear parking lot is absurd and counterproductive, especially with the massive amount of parking in the park already and the 30% parking occupancy rate on Balboa Drive that city staff had presented at this meeting a few months ago. It is a slippery slope to offset a reduction in parking in one part of the park with additional parking in the other. Adding more parking disincentivizes other ways of transportation to the park and inherently prioritizes car-based transportation, again, actively working against the city's stated mode shift and traffic safety goals. The city, in this case, is ignoring the wishes of the community, feedback from the Bankers Hill Community Group, and the bike trail laid out in the Balboa Park Master Plan by moving forward with this redesign. Balboa Drive can easily be made an open street for bicyclists, families, and pedestrians. A potential compromise could look like slowing down the traffic by reducing the roadway width and reducing the number of vehicle lanes to one, enhancing active transportation access with a bi-directional protected class four cycle track on the east side, which is in line with both the city's class four first approach and the Balboa Park Master Plan. And then you can maintain curbside parking on the west side. If we absolutely have to optimize parking availability in the park, I recommend that the city set market rate pricing for parking in Balboa Park and then use this revenue to make further improvements to our crown jewel. We don't need a parking lot. We need a park. Thank you. Adam Deutsch. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. All right. Um, uh, thanks for, for opening up this conversation for all of us to participate. I'm really pleased to hear that uh, research shows us that more parking isn't necessary. Um, I also am glad that Katie mentioned our Vision Zero goals in the city um, and the increasing size of motor vehicles that creates uh, a lot of safety hazards for people outside of cars. And I'm also glad that Anar mentioned our uh, other mobility plans in the city um, and is suggesting uh, ideas that go in line with that. We have a climate action plan in San Diego, which you know I'm positive everybody in this room is aware of. Um, I hope that we can seriously consider that climate action plan in this conversation. Um, more parking spaces in the park incentivizes people to drive cars to the park. Um, this city has a specific mandate, according to that cap, to reduce vehicle miles traveled. The goal, according to strategy three of the Climate Action Plan, includes an 8% reduction in vehicle miles traveled in just seven years and a 15% reduction by 2035. More parking will make these goals even more difficult to achieve. More people driving cars in the park also creates danger for those walking, riding bikes, skating, or doing other recreational activities. Those people become disincentivized to use that road at all. Um, and the design prioritizes drivers over everyone else using the park. Please don't add more parking on this road. If the goal is accessibility, that's an important goal. It's um, something that should definitely be thought about. I would suggest painting existing spaces blue to help speak to that goal. But turning that road into a linear parking lot uh, is foolish and goes directly against our climate action plans, which is a mandate the city has got to start taking seriously. Thank you so much. Uh, Jason is next. Hi, thank you. So I'm a little disappointed in the direction the city's heading. Uh, it seems that the new plans are actually more dangerous for bikers and we need to be going in the opposite way because bikes don't pollute our environment and we have these climate goals. Every time we jump in the car, we're burning countless gallons of gasoline and that is kind of the biggest issue we're facing today. So just a simple bike path, you know, we have plenty of pavement there. We can keep some parking, but we just need that two-way protected class four bike path, please. That is all, thank you. Honor Proctor. Hi, I'm Connor. I'm a I'm a resident of Bankers Hill, just a couple blocks from Balboa Drive. 
Anyone who spends time in this area knows that rollerbladers, skateboarders, bicyclists, and families are often riding up and down the street, even often going against the traffic flow. These people are riding here despite it being a one-way street completely dedicated to cars. This shows that there's a latent demand in the park for a space to do these activities, and the city has a great opportunity to give us that space. The city plan seems even worse than the status quo, making it even more dangerous for people riding or jogging on the street. I would love instead to see the street closed to cars, giving residents an amazing car free space to play in. It should be easy to do because Balboa Drive already has gates that are used to close the street to cars every night. This is something other cities have been doing to great success. LA, San Francisco, Denver, DC, among others. Alternatively, a two-way separated multi-purpose path down the east side of the street would be a fantastic compromise. This would give people space to ride up and down the street or jog or do other activities. Um, people already go both ways on the street and we need to give them a way to do so safely. West Mesa already has plenty of parking. There's maybe two days a year where there's not enough parking in this area. Um, it's crazy to think that like we would need to add more parking here to anyone who lives here. Balboa Park needs more park, not more parking lots. I asked the board to reject this plan and the city to reconsider their options. Thank you. Matt Stewart. Matt, are you there? We'll come back to Matt. Uh, Zachary Bratt. Hi, good evening. Uh, my name's Zach. I live about half a mile from Balboa Park. Um, I'm really disappointed to see the city's plans here. Um, like a lot of other commenters have said, it seems to be more dangerous than the current uh, layout for people who aren't in a car. Um, I think the best plan here would either be to remove cars from Balboa Drive entirely and turn it into a class one uh, multi-use path for cyclists, pedestrians, rollerbladers, and whoever else, um, or at the very least follow the city's updated climate action plan and install a class four cycle track um, that's fully protected from vehicular traffic. Um, as we know, sharrows don't really increase safety for cyclists and often are more dangerous uh, on some roads. And so the city's plan to install Sharrows in our Crown Jewel Park here is uh, pretty disappointing. So I really hope that the the city and the committee here uh, changes course and um, makes those changes to improve safety and improve recreational opportunities for all San Diegans. Thanks. Matt Stewart again. Hey, can you hear me this time? Was I? Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, hey. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if you heard any of what I said last time, so I'll just start over. Um, I'm here to oppose the proposed changes to Balboa Drive. Um, some people say Balboa Park is our version of Central Park or Golden Gate Park. But if you look at what both of these parks have done in recent years, as well as other parks throughout the country, they have eliminated or reduced car usage, um, including JFK Drive in San Francisco last year, which uh, has proven to be very popular with residents. We should follow their lead by making it safer to bike walk and take transit within the park instead of increasing parking availability when you know the previous study said that there's plenty of parking on the west mesa it is also embarrassing argument to claim that this parking will offset park boulevard losses uh, from the upcoming bike and bus lane when the two projects are nearly a mile apart as others have said like i just don't get how, how you think that that will replace you know the loss on the side of the park um and also that sharrows should never be considered bike infrastructure or improvements um it does nothing for safety and you know sometimes i feel more less safe on the road when there are sharrows um this project if if it goes forward will once again show that san diego is not serious about micro mobility vision zero or climate change um, i recommend the same as what some others have said reduced to one vehicle lane with a two-way bike lane and parking along one one curve and i'm wondering if the city analyzed if they did this layout if they could also still have the back end angled parking and if you know that would keep parking at the same level it is now while adding uh, the bike lane 
Uh, thank you. Mitch Silverstein. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi there, Mitch Silverstein, San Diego County Policy Coordinator for Surfrider Foundation. Our city's over-reliance on cars poses a direct threat to the health of our ocean and the beaches we love, which are highly threatened by climate change-induced sea level rise. The San Diego chapter promotes active transportation as a critical strategy to mitigate GHG's emissions. As I'm sure you all know, transportation is the single largest emitter of GHG emissions in San Diego. I'd like to echo the comments from the previous bike commuters who opposed angled parking on Balboa Drive. Balboa Drive already runs parallel to six. It's useless for driving, but offers a great pathway for biking and other active transportation modes, and could be made even better through creation of a separate bikeway. Like others have said, you can't paint a white bicycle on a street and call it bike infrastructure. What we need is our own lanes away from cars. If biking is made safe, more people will do it. Creation of additional parking or maintaining current levels at expensive active transportation alternatives and even recovering lost parking spaces from, from Park Boulevard, it's ultimately a losing scenario because we need to reduce our car dependency and incentivize climate-friendly alternatives. A winning scenario is offering protected bikeways in and throughout the park. Balboa Drive is a perfect opportunity to do that. Uh, class four bikeways are supposed to be an integral part of our city council approved climate action plan. Please reject this plan and explore this opportunity further. Thank you. Zach Farrell. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, uh, good, uh, happy new year, everyone. Uh, my name is Zach Tafazio Farrell. I'm a resident of University Heights. Um, I'd like to speak in opposition to the city's proposal to expand parking along Balboa Drive. Um, there are already over 7,000 parking spaces in Balboa Park, and the parking along Balboa Drive has, I think it's been mentioned, about a 30% utilization rate. Doesn't seem like it makes a lot of sense to add more. Um, I'd like to recommend that uh, a bi-directional separated bike lane be added as well. This would encourage, among other things, a much healthier lifestyle so that um, future dads like myself could avoid nurturing future dad bods by biking. So thank you very much. And we hope to move this along forward. Uh, Rachel Graham. Hi. I wanted to call in in opposition to the addition of more parking spaces to Balboa Park. As others have explained, it's unneeded and contrary to our climate action plan, as well as our Vision Zero goals. I would also like to advocate for a two-way Class 4 protected bikeway on the east side of Balboa Drive. I was told Thank that. That's very encouraged. Was that okay? All right. Um, Gila Rusher. Hello, everyone. Thank you all for being here, for holding this space, and for listening to our comments. I'd like to strongly encourage the committee to think outside the box or to think outside the parking spot, if you will, in regards to Balboa Drive. We shall be mindful about the mode of transportation that this plan encourages, and we should consider how instead we could better support people in arriving by other modes, including biking, walking, and taking transit, rather than adding more parking spots during climate crisis. I think Balboa Drive would benefit immensely from the bi-directional bike path and mixed use path for pedestrians to enjoy, which would align much more closely with Vision Zero goals in our climate action plan. Balboa Park is a truly spectacular place to visit and to work in my case. And the more ways that people can arrive there and the safer that they feel once they're at the park, the better everyone's experience will be. Thank you very much. Manny Rodriguez. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, my name is Manny Rodriguez, and I'm a downtown resident who frequents Balboa Park often. And I'd like to bring attention to how in San Francisco, there is a park called Golden Gate Park, you know, their urban park, and they have a street similar to Balboa Park called JFK Promenade. And they recently voted to shut it down to car traffic completely. Um, and they kids love it, the parents love it, you know, people who frequent the park love it because it opens as a parking lot. You know, a lot of people have cited, you know, concerns about the climate and safety, which are totally, like, legitimate, but also, like, the vibes, like, it's so much nicer to be in JFK Drive without cars, and it would be so much nicer to be in Balboa Drive without cars. Um, obviously, that is a lofty goal. I don't expect 
the city to be able to reach it. But at the very least, you could provide a safe space for children and for families and parents by providing a two-way cycle track class four protected by the very minimum um, to bring us closer to a reality where the park is used for recreational activities and not to store your two-ton metal box. Thank you very much. That's all I have for public comment. Uh, perfect. With that, we'll go to committee member questions or comments. Starting with Howard. I don't intend to always go first. Sorry. Um, cool. um, I was uh, so in, in looking at this uh, project, I um, I did two things. Uh, I looked at uh, the new parks uh, master plan uh, policies for mobile uh, parks master plan. Uh, mobility is recreation policies, and none of the policies really talked about replacement of parking. It talked more, uh, MR1 says encourage active recreational to include trails, bikeways, greenways, multi-use uh, paths, other active transportations, and um, MR2 policy says to uh, 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 repurpose appropriate right of ways to serve as active tr uh, transportation connections, encouraging walking and biking. And that means facilities. I also looked at the Balboa Park master plan. And that master plan was from uh, 2004 when, uh, and, I, and it looks, appears to me like it was mostly intended to help the zoo uh, mitigate or, or the zoo to build a parking garage. And the only mention of replacing parking in uh Balboa Park is is at the zoo, um, and it, there is no policies that say there is, should be uh, any parking that's reduced here has to be found over there. So my question is to staff: What policy are you using for this replacement directive that seems to be driving this uh, this um, uh, facility? And Chair Chase, did you want me to respond to that? Sure, thanks, Paul. Great. Um, yeah, you know, I think the this we weren't listen, looking at 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 policies per se in terms of parking um, loss or replacement. Uh, this was done in terms of a, a systematic approach and and how Park Boulevard kind of led the charge. And and again, these are slurry projects, so along the the lines of repaving and repurpose, and and how could you implement. Uh, projects and, and policies that go with those, like the, the bike master plan. Um, that's that's the intent of that effort, like wholesale, I could say, you could say wholesale, but but not specifically policy that was balancing against the, the lost parking on that side. And and maybe, you know, maybe this is a, a chance and just an opportunity to to just share a, a little bit about distance. You know, we we were looking at that as a system. And again, later on tonight, you'll talk a little bit about how we we provide park um, bike parking uh, um, and also shared use mobility parking. We, we looked at the distance between kind of the heart of the park, like right around the museums and how that sort of either side, right? Like if you draw a straight line over to, to Park Boulevard, you have the slope there, Park Boulevard, which is a little bit of a challenge. And then across the Laurel Street Bridge um, uh, to, uh, to the west side of the park, it, it's roughly equal. And if, and if you'll allow me, I'll just, um, just throw, throw that up there real quick, just, just for context, right? So. Um, hopefully this is just the general screen that's showing, but um, um, that if you kind of look at that epicenter around the Minge Museum or Museum of Alaska, kind of between there and, and around the Prado, um, that that's this is just kind of equal arrows on either side. Obviously, it's it's a it's a, a tad farther away. It goes kind of right the you know to the, the dog park there, but you can see it's not like um, you know Balboa Drive is kind of off in the hinterlands, right? So. Um, you know, this was an attempt to look at, at balance uh, and not necessarily to fulfill or, or meet a, a policy per se. So just wanted to share that. I'll stop sharing the screen. Thank you. Thanks, Howard. Thanks, Paul. Any other committee member comments? I also, I will just note, um, just for some context and a reminder, this committee did ask staff to look at any improvements to additional streets within the park when we looked when we were approving Park Boulevard, not only the surface lots for restriping, but restriping opportunities. So I understand definitely the proponents um, 
and then ask for no additional parking and to focus on additional bike improvements. But that was a conversation that we did have at this committee uh, in previous months. So uh, with that, I will go to Brer and then Chris. Sorry about that delay. Um, thank you, Phil and Claudia for coming out again. And um, I just wanna say thanks to Christina and the both of you for making your way out to Bankers Hill by way of internet uh, to hear the concerns of the community. Um, I thought we had a great discussion there and um, I appreciate uh, that information getting shared out uh, to the other committee members. Um, I think there are a lot of concerns about how this proposal is going to affect the way the community experiences uh, the West Mesa. You know, as you know, uh, we are deficient in Uptown for community parks, if you look at it by numbers. And when it's brought up to city staff, um, they say, well, you've got Balboa Park right there. You can go and use the park. And, and so this is what, you know, we rely on. Um, I understand the motivation of this proposal. People aren't happy about losing Parky on Park Boulevard. And so, uh, you know, staff is interested in uh, making up for that loss in other places inside the park. But I think what's being ignored, or at least isn't being uh, uh, offered as an option is um, other design options that benefit the community uh, there is a significant impact to park spaces or any space in the city when you bring more cars in the higher the auto density the more risk the more pollution the more noise the less access for people particularly small people or young people and if we are going to continue to view the West Mesa as the uptown community part of the park. I, I think bringing more cars in here is the wrong approach. Now, I'll try not to go on too long, but if the goal is to bring more visitors to the museums and allow more people to visit the park, Building even more parking inside Bubba Park isn't the answer. The answer is to provide public transit, to provide other ways to get to the park and to encourage those ways through whatever means you can think of, advertising, promotions, whatever. Building more parking is the wrong path and we've been doing it for many, many years. And I think that the park is worse off for it. Um, if you look as recently as 2006, uh, as the, at the park and recreation study, uh, land use and management. It, it outlines a series of priorities, all of which focus on things like um, enhancing the natural aspects of the park, improving the aesthetics, um, distributing access fairly, uh, implementing shuttle and transit, controlling parking. I mean, as Donald Shoup from UCLA has taught everyone in the world lately, uh, if you have a parking problem, it's because you're not managing your parking, not because you don't have enough parking. You can never build enough parking. Fixing the parking problem is through management. So I would just like to wrap this up with a couple of questions. I mean, I, I don't understand why the suggestions brought forward by the community haven't been considered or presented as an option. Phil, did you, you have a chance to look at the idea of uh, providing a two-way cycle track down by Bow Drive? Yeah, Chair Chase, did you want me to answer that? Yeah, we, um, yeah, yeah. oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, we, uh, um, and thanks for, our, um, yeah, it, it was, it, you know, um, when we were, we looked at the different configurations, you know, obviously it was about the, roadway width that we had available with slurry jobs, you don't get into the concrete and, and curb and gutter. It's sort of like what width you have available. So, so we looked at a number of, of, of options um, with direction to, to consider Park Boulevard. That was the, um, you know, the, the, the design that we 
uh, move forward with the detailed drawings as you saw from the, the PowerPoint presentation. Um, but wanted to, you know, really, I think one thing that that is sort of left behind, or maybe it's too obvious, but but you know, going from a, a two lane road down to a one lane road, um, and with some markings for for bikes, obviously not or this design is is not to be clear, is not a bike lane, um, but with the adjacent cycle tracks uh, um, and bike lanes for the the three parallel roads immediately to the west, uh, it didn't seem to be necessary to have that type of alignment. And in fact, with going from in a road diet um, from what from two lanes down to one, we think that amplifies and increases the safety. So, um, you know, I think looking at all of the, those things in terms of alternatives and access um, that we felt that this was a better solution and a safer solution uh, for cyclists uh, than what's out there now, especially sure. with the road diet. So, you know, I, I think that we did sketch out, you know, just to be clear, right, as a bi directional cycle track, you know, if you had. You know, parallel parking on both sides, what type of, you know, needs you would have for space, spatial orientation with bollards and everything. So yeah, sure, we, we went through the gamut of those alternatives, but, um, you know, a clear direction we had was to consider um, uh, Park Boulevard, given that that's a, a mass, massive project um, yeah. to understand balance. Yeah. I, I understand that was your direction. Um, the points that were made by Bankers Hill Community Group were that it's not a two-way cycle track isn't just about cyclists. There are people who run and roller skate and walk um, and do all sorts of different activities on various different types of devices in the park in the morning for exercise. And that need for those, uh, for space for those uses was demonstrated during the pandemic when the road was closed and it was filled with people. So I guess my, the argument here isn't, we're not just talking about uh, an additional bike facility, we're talking about carving out um, space for active uses within the park which I believe should be prioritized above parking spaces for, uh, and, and this is, these parking spaces won't just be for the museums, mind you. These parking spaces are also being utilized by people in the community uh, for everything. Uh, construction workers, St. Luke's uses Balboa Park as overflow parking. Workers downtown use Balboa Park to park their car and then they walk downtown or they even bike downtown. Like this parking isn't about museum attendance. This parking, adding more parking here is going to encourage many different types of uses that have nothing to do with park uses. So on that point, I'd like to say that creating space for active transportation <clears throat> should be prioritized above more parking for all of these various other uses. Do you, do you see my point there? Phil? Yeah, I, I do. Okay, so I, I guess at this point, I wanna ask if city staff would be willing to go away and look at a cycle track option. I'm just asking, personally, if this is something you'd be willing to do. I think tonight we're, we're seeking direction from the committee as a group. Um, I, just, I understand uh, that. I'm, I'm, I'm considering a motion, but I'm asking, um, you know, what the city's uh, willing to do at this point before I do it. Yeah, I think I think we are are looking for for that precisely that direction. What um, you know, we have come up with a proposal that uh, balances against a lot of different needs. Um, and the next step for us to be clear in terms of timeline, uh, and I think Claudia did a great job with it. But just to, to just to restate it, right, is that um, the the job has to be batched with other slurry jobs. Um, and so the next step for us is to develop a engineering signing and striping plan. Uh, that would be due by mid-February to make sure we stay on schedule and we kind of are attached to that slurry group um, in order to go forward with summer um, construction and, and fall uh, open to traffic or you know completion date I should say so um, so yeah this this is this step right of, of getting recommendation and direction from the Balboa Park committee on what uh, should be done moving forward. I understand um, to that point I would just like to share my experience on 30th Street where uh, we uh, drove up and down it for about three months with no striping. Um, and it happens, right? And I think the quality of design and what gets implemented in Balboa Park should be 
is more important than um, meeting a striping schedule, to be honest. So, I mean, with that in mind, um, I'd like to make a motion uh, and supporting the Bankers Hill community group, uh, the residents of Bankers Hill who called in, uh, the Bicycle Coalition, the Surf Rider Foundation, and all the other people who have uh, called in tonight to share their preference for a park that prioritizes people over parking. Um, I'd like to make a motion to table item 101 until such time that the Balboa Park Committee, either under the proposed design review committee or under an ad hoc subcommittee design assembled to review this item further, has had the opportunity to review and provide recommendations for alternative design options uh, with to and with the assistance of city staff. Okay, thanks, Barb. So just to clarify, um, if I'm saying it back correctly, your motion is to not bring forward or take any action on this redesign proposal until either the creation of a design review committee or a subcommittee that would be focused on some sort of design review. And does yeah, I've copied that into um, the chat to you, which you'd be able to see. I don't have any in the chat. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I did not do it. It didn't go. Hold on. And I will. Let's uh, go to Chris and my guest. Hi. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. So um, I, I think the the motion is sort of um, <clears throat> DOA dead on arrival because it it includes the need for a subcommittee to be established and that sort of thing and we haven't confirmed whether or not that can work but um, and I think I honestly believe that with the input that we've received that uh, I would trust the judgment of this committee to make a reasonable decision. Tabling it would be a reasonable decision. Tabling it in favor of creating a new committee to analyze it, uh, that makes no sense. It usurps the purpose of this group. Aside from that, I had a few comments. Uh, and some are, you know, maybe sort of innovative. I don't know. Um, it just occurred to me while we were um, listening to um, all of the public comments, but you know, we've heard climate crisis, we've heard um, climate action plan, we've heard vision zero. There's, you know, one of the things we could do is to look at the possibility of adding parking meters. Now, I know they're not utilized enough to justify it, but the, um, the revenue could go to the park, number one. Number two, we could exempt all electric vehicles um, from having to pay for the parking. So uh, if we could accommodate all of the climate crisis issues or certainly assuage the concerns of those who think that more parking is being created and more traffic is being created and, and we're hurting the environment. So that's something we should probably look at in a lot of places in San Diego, but we could be a leader in that regard. Um, the other thing is I, I think personally, that the reversed angled parking um, would become more underutilized than anything. Um, first of all, it's a nuance. I experienced it recently and I, I went down and made a U-turn and came back and parked on the other side of the street. I think it assumes that everybody has vehicles now that have reverse cameras and are guided in backwards. That's not a good assumption. Um, I think uh, a normal uh, diagonal parking place pulling in is also safer for bikers. When you back out of a parking place, you have the benefit of seeing that you have reverse lights, you have brake lights, they're all visible to bikers. They can take, a, they can avoid a problem because they see that a car is coming out. If it's coming out forward, none of those indicators are available. It's more hazardous to, to bicyclists. So I, I, I really don't like the reverse angle. I also had a question, were the, um, were the accessible parking places also reverse angle? The blue curbs? Okay, so that's just a question. At any, <laughs> but I, I am curious because if, if they, if I, I, I don't know that there's an accommodation for reverse angle accessible parking and there's probably reasons for that as well. So we might be getting ahead of ourselves uh, on that. 
the other reason for, you know, one of the justifications is safe offloading for children and whatnot at um, the reversed uh, angle parking. How about we have a significant area for um, loading and unloading for, you know, a white curb three minute for loading and offloading and that sort of thing so that people can load and offload their picnic items or whatever they're doing safely and then move on. Uh, so those are all my comments. I, I, I don't disagree with tabling, but I do disagree with tabling um, when the motion includes creating somebody other than this committee who's quite capable of making logical, good decisions. Thanks, Chris. Micah? Yeah, uh, good evening, everybody. And Chris, thank you for those, uh, I think, creative uh, suggestions and how uh, this project could continue to help address a wider variety of stakeholder concerns. Um, I'm gonna go against the grain here and um, support the city's uh, proposal. Um, I, I wanted first though, to really express appreciation and gratitude for the city's hard work and um, answering the call of this committee to come up with um, solutions that find a better balance. Um, and also to all the folks in the public uh, who spoke tonight, um, I think there were a lot of very compelling um, comments made relative to um, pedestrian and bike safety and um, issues along those lines. Um, and I particularly appreciate the, the civility that uh, people came to the Zoom room with um, in, in the sort of spirit that, you know, we can feel passionate and, and agree to disagree about issues that are important to all of us instead of um, demonizing folks. Um, so thank you for that. Um, I, personally, I feel that this discussion is really indicative of um, the, a problem we've been talking about for a long time, which is that there is a consistent um, unwillingness or inability to uh, come together to come up with comprehensive large-scale solutions that uh, address the multifaceted concerns uh, that many different stakeholders that um, need to find ways to coexist in a, in a major uh, urban park like Bobo Park need to, um, we need to address. And there have been so many kind of small piecemeal projects in recent years um, that have, uh, you know, taking away parking here, taken away parking there, um, and uh, have um, caused additional sort of issues because we're not thinking holistically about how to address the larger issues. Um, I feel that what we should really be doing is pushing to get these large scale um, sort of solutions, I think that Brer was referring to um, relative to public transit and other sorts of um, access uh, opportunities um, that really allow people to um, uh, you know, move away from the car and, and move into these other forms. Um, we, are, we constantly talk about this, but it, it's sort of been forgotten tonight uh, that Balboa Park is a, a neighborhood park and a regional park. And there are folks from all over the city, all over the county, um, and especially from uh, underserved, um, historically marginalized communities that don't have access to public transit to the park, don't have access, uh, aren't, aren't in bikeable distance, don't live near the park. Uh, and um, I am just stunned when folks say that there is no parking problem in the park. I, I don't know what universe they live in because as somebody who uses the park every day, who works in the park, who has um, teams of employees and volunteers uh, who are coming to the park uh, on, a, on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. Um, it is obvious that there are many, many issues regarding parking. Um, and, you know, I think what we're trying to do here is find some sort of a balance um, with the stakeholders that are in the park. Um, I think bike safety and pedestrian safety and Again, many of the points raised by, by many members of the public are really right on, but until we have and kind of come together around large scale solutions, 
um, the the small piecemeal uh, solutions are, are are tantamount to sort of death by a thousand cuts. So I appreciate the the city's effort to find some sort of balance here, um, in that lots of uh, parking places have disappeared from the park over the years through various projects, um, and um, encourage all of us to think bigger and um, longer term and um, in terms of more comprehensive solutions. So uh, I will support the uh, the city's proposal, but I do also always encourage um, lots of great creative ideas that came up and uh, things that are worth considering. And um, I hope there's room in the city's uh, proposal to, to also find a, a balance with some of these ideas and to really consider them in earnest. Thank you. Um, thank you, Micah. Is that a motion? We certainly do not have a second on the motion that's on the floor. It's the motion to um, recommend. Yeah, I would second that. Okay. I'm sorry, would you mind repeating that? I was going to say, do you want, are you making that motion since currently we only have prayers motion on the floor? So approve staff recommendation, or are you waiting yeah, I, to? I would, I would make that motion. Okay. To approve um, the city's recommendation. Thanks, Micah. I'm not going to repeat a lot of your points. I do have an ask because I definitely think the conversation around should we even be using some of these um, streets, um, let alone the improvements that are making, should we close streets? We've talked about Jacaranda in the public comment. We're talking about Balboa today. Um, I would second Micah's motion, but I'd also ask staff um, if we could figure out a way to have a conversation about um, any potential street closure or future use of, of Balboa um, in a different way. Obviously, this is still could be an interim improvement while we do a larger kind of, to Micah's point, holistic planning um, for some of these sections of the park. So I, Christina is nodding her head if, if we could work together. And I'd love the input from Brer and others and Phil um, as we have those conversations. And um, so with that, we have a motion and a second. Uh, it looks like Howard, Chris, and then Frere. And then if anyone else, committee member comments. How did you say Howard or Brer? Who, I'm sorry. Uh, I was going in the order that I saw. So it looked like it was Howard, Chris, Frere, and then Catherine. Um, I'm just curious what happened to, um, it looks like Makeda too. Yeah. Um, oh, I, I, I'd like to, um, I don't understand what happened to uh, Brer's motion. We never asked for a second. We just had comments on Brer's motion. And then when it went away, and then now um, uh, Micah makes a motion and it's seconded. And there's no comment on it. So I'm, cu I'm curious. <laughs> how, what, did I, what did I miss? I wanted to second Brer's motion to get I a vote. I apologize. You're right, Howard. Um, we can go back to the initial motion on the floor, which is what's in the chat. If you would like to second it, there no one was jumping on or commenting. Um, I would like to second Frere's motion with the caveat that Chris made of of uh, don't worry about the a committee review or an ad hoc committee where the where we can do this. Um, that's the only um, amendment to the motion that I would like to make. So thank you. Okay, so to confirm, um, Frere, are you open to the amendment, which would be removing everything on your motion other than just tabling the item? If that's correct. Yeah, I'm open to um, suggestions, as always, on a motion I make. Um, you know, I, 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 I hear what Chris was saying, and my personal feeling is that in, in the committee format, it's a lot easier to discuss um, ideas like all of the things you said, Chris, um, whereas I, I find in, in, I'm sorry, in the subcommittee format where it's easier to speak freely. In this format, I find it a little restrictive, but I'm willing to um, accept that uh, modification to my motion to table the item. Okay, so we have a motion from Frere to table item 101, a second from Howard. Victor, if you could call the roll, or if we have any additional comments on that motion, from those that have their hands raised. Makeda, Catherine, Chris, it looks like you did put your hand down. I was gonna, I'll reserve my comments um, since we're, we're taking up this motion, so I'm okay. Um, 
And Makeda, do you want to make a comment on the current motion as it stands? Looks like you're still muted. So first of all, I want to thank, thank Phil and Claudia and the city. And you know the way I feel. I'm going to hit the DE. You know, I'm going to deal with the 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 marginalized communities. And that, that that's always left out. You know, think about how are they going to get, they don't live around the park. They, you know, they're living way in skylines and other communities where buses stop. And we don't need parking meters. Uh, the, what's the best thing about this park? It, you know, it's free, you know, the parking. You know, I, we don't need an ACE parking. You know, we don't, you know, I feel that um, that we have to think about people of color. How do they get places? You know, how, what is their transportation? I, you know, I'm the seven bus and uh, it runs, it's re directly by the World Beat Center, but to take the bus is risky. There is, you know, we have a lot of, you know, trauma that's going on with a lot of people right now in, in our city. And the, you know, I hear people screaming off the bus. So I just asked you to look at a balance, you know, all of you, I understand, you know, I'm great. I, I've been a bike rider, you know, for years. Um, not now, <laughs> but, but it, it's, I know, you know, I, I hear you, but I'm just saying, put your, your yourself in our shoes and in the institutions that are bringing people to this park too. So that's all. Thank you. Thanks, Makeda. Chris? Yeah, um, so where we are right now, at least the motion that's on the table is to um, table it. And so it, it, it's not that it's not approved, it's not that it is approved, um, we have an opportunity to look at alternative designs. Phil, uh, quick question. You, you're going to have to slurry the street, and when you do, you're going to have to restripe. How much time do we have to deal with this topic going forward? It doesn't sound like much like, at all. What's that? Oh, that, that wasn't me. Um, um, yeah, uh, I can respond to that. So, yeah, it's not it's not a lot of time, I think. You know, push just pushing this out uh, without an acting on a um, a concept uh, would certainly delay the project. I think um, it is going to be challenging to to meet the schedule as is. So, well, what was the schedule? Um, I forgot. Yeah, so uh, mid February, we need to provide a final signing and striping plan uh, for this project. Uh -huh. um, so that gives us a month and a half to do these engineering drawings, um, which we were queued up to do and, and wanted to you know seek direction on on this proposal as it as it stands um, uh, you know similar to what was brought in October so um, certainly resetting I think I think um, you know to be frank right uh, pushing something out without action on us on a particular design uh, would certainly delay the, this implementation well we probably should have had more time to deliberate this than under the circumstances I think that's putting um, sort of putting the gun to our heads uh, that our next meeting is a month from now. And um, I, I still believe that it's a good idea to table it. And hopefully um, if we approve that, if we if we vote in favor of that motion, um, the city can readjust and we can talk about some alternatives to the plan that's presented currently. Some alternatives may may actually please Micah. And, and some alternatives may please Brer in their motions, but I think we're gonna need a little bit more time. And I have to think the city has more flexibility in this regard. Uh, I just slurried three and a half acres and striped it. And I changed my mind uh, pretty soon before, uh, pretty close to the, to the moment of truth. And, and they were able to accommodate me. So um, yeah, I, I just wanted to know what you were expecting, and and so obviously this vote, if it if it's approved um, by the committee, is is gonna is gonna require 
more alternatives and more thinking. And perhaps, Phil, maybe um, the city of San Diego can come up with some alternatives that um, Brer can sink his teeth into and, and maybe um, accommodate Micah as well, something you could be thinking about. That's it. Thanks, Chris. Brer, and then I, I have a question for Phil. Um, just to your point, Chris, you know, the street I live on is a 60 foot wide, unstriped residential street. Um, and, and it's, it, it works just fine. Um, it doesn't, we don't have to get in and restripe two lanes and stripe out all the parking spaces. You can, you know, uh, reapply your stop lines and then sit and wait for design and until it happens. It's just a little bit of inconvenience for, for the uh, transportation team. Christina? Yes, I wanted to um, just uh, for clarity reasons, wanted to reiterate actually a comment that you had made, Chair Chase, which is that there are two components to this proposal before you tonight. One is the, 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 uh, the slurry, and then the second part is the striping. There is nothing permanent about striping um, on the street. We would be able to remove that paint at any time in the future. And so by approving the proposal before you this evening would not preclude you from continuing to discuss the future of Balboa Drive um, in a way that would be able to balance the needs that we foresee um, related to parking today, um, but also continuing to keep in mind um, future uses as well. So I just wanted to make sure that that was, that was clear moving forward with this proposal would not preclude this committee from continuing to discuss other alternatives. Wouldn't that make it a lot harder to switch to those alternatives though? Sorry, this is for committee conversation and public comment, um, whatever. Uh, my question, Phil, was was to that. I mean, understanding the timeline and the, the slurry sale group job and the fact that those all need to likely move forward, will this be just receiving a slurry without a restriping if we put it on hold, or will the entire section of improvement for Balboa be put on hold because we're not taking action on item 101? Right, uh, and just to reinforce, I think what Christine was saying too. Yeah, we can. You know, it's just it's just paint it. It's the slurry underneath and the paint on top. Um, we can paint it however we like. It would be smart of us to to be grouped with the slurry job and to make the deadline of some you know with something, um, whether it's replacing what's there today or doing this configuration. But we can, um, as Christina said, uh, we we shouldn't miss this opportunity. It's just paint. We can change it at any time. Um, but uh, um, you know, this is this we see as staff. Uh, this is this is part of a more comprehensive solution. And there's other things happening. Obviously, Park Boulevard is a major project, and that's going to be coming down the line. And we want to have sort of you know a systems approach. And 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 again, I mean, not to not to beat it beat it at horse here, but just thinking about um, you know safety improvements that come with this alignment, a road diet. Uh, we're doing a lot to to help multimodal users uh, in the park. Yes. Uh, replacement parking, uh, but this uh, design over the existing uh, we see as, as far as superior. Thanks, Paul. Chris Howard, and then we'll call for the vote. Chris and Howard. Go ahead, Chris. Uh, okay, so, you know, slurry is very superficial. We haven't talked about grinding. We haven't talked about patching. We haven't talked about repairs in the street. Uh, if, if it's just slurry we're talking about, then I, I, I just don't under, understand what, you know, why it, it's it's necessary and why we can't reschedule that or or slurry something else somewhere else and come back to this. Again, it, slurrying is just, that's just a, a top coating. Um, and I think before we just stripe it and then sort of never get back to it, um, we should find a way to just put off the slurrying. It sounds like if it's just a slurry, then the, then the roadway is not in bad shape. It's just, you know, time to put a little top coat on it and then stripe. Um, I don't, again, I don't think we should just be moved along because of the schedule. I'll just agree with uh, what Chris said, because I feel like being asked to rubber stamp is not what this committee is about. We have expertise. We represent areas. This is uh, intended to be um, feedback that, uh, that for the mayor's office for them to uh, make decisions and to uh, 
just have one shot at this with uh, once again, uh, a compromised design and yeah, it's paint, but it was just do this. Why can't we just do it right the first time? And uh, let's take the time to get it right because it sounds like the Uptown uh, Community Planner Group actually has better alternatives that I'd like to see. So thank you. Thanks, Howard. Seeing no additional committee member comments or questions. Uh, Victor, can you call the roll? Molly Chase. I will support the motion. Catherine Johnston. Uh, yes, I'll support it. Howard Blackson. This is very welcome, right? Yes, I'll support it. Thank you. Deng Nguyen. Uh, yes, I support it. Briar Marsh. Uh, yes. William Aaron Jr. Yes. Micah Parzin. No. Makeda Cheatham. No. Sarah Daw. Yes. Chris Eddy. Yes. Okay, thank you all. That will that motion passes to table the item. Phil, uh, Claudia, thank you both for being here. Christy, I see was also on, so I appreciate your time this evening um, and the work that you've put into this. And hopefully we can have future discussions and bring something back. So we really appreciate it. Uh, up next, we have two special events this evening, um, item 301 and 302. Um, with that, first up is item 301, vegan food pop-up shop, San Diego Earth Fest. Michael May is here to provide information on the event. I'm not sure if Michael's still It's here. Michelle. It's Michelle. Oh, apologies, Michelle. Michelle, you're still muted. Oh, there we go. I'm sorry about that. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, thank you so much. Yes, thank you for considering my event. I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Thanks, Michelle. Do we have any uh, not or any public comment on the item, Tony? Um, no. Any committee member comments or questions or motion? Makeda. Makeda. Um, I was looking at. Um, hi, Michelle. I was looking at your um, layout and you only had two bathrooms, you know, being, being a promoter, you know, I look at those things, um, two bathrooms uh, for how many people do you expect? We're expecting under 500. I think you're gonna need more bathrooms, restrooms, more restrooms. I thought we needed approximately one per 250. Um, we have somewhere between three to 400, maybe 500 on the high end. What would you recommend? Um, I recommend uh, about about uh, handicap and um, about, I would say about five more with handicap and a wash and, washer sink. From 800 to 1,000, when we were in Encinitas, and we, we were able to do that with two restrooms. Currently in North Park, um, we have about three to 500, and we've had, we've had one there. We're, we're bumping that up to two. Um, it's not, um, it hasn't been an issue for us so far, but I'm, you know, obviously very open to any kind of recommendations. I want it to be a good experience for, for all, but we also are a newer event. And not a, not a very profitable one, so we're trying to be cost effective as well. 
How many dumpsters do you plan to have? Um, we're going to have um, a large garbage dumpster, a large recycling dumpster, and then we'll also be collecting organic waste. Uh, what about uh, bins, um, trash bins, um, the little cardboard trash bins? Are you going to yeah, have them? I was I was with Carolyn Chase of Earthworks, uh, and um, one of the she keeps saying one of the things that really spoiled it for her is have to depend on marijuana and alcohol. Do you who are your sponsors? Do you have do you have do you have marijuana? Absolutely not. Um, we would be have we're a we're a food focused event. Obviously, the focus for the I I can't hear you very well. But, last, but um, let me tell you, last time there were marijuana sponsors. There were trees of marijuana walking by. You know, absolutely so. not. This is a family friendly event, and that is not the vibe at any of the events that I've gone. Thank you. So no, no uh, intoxicants. Yes, I can promise you that there will be no no marijuana or alcohol that is either allowed or you know obviously distributed in the event. So you have enough uh, security per uh, people and everything. Let's see, uh, no styrofoam. You, you know all that stuff too. Yes, absolutely. We, you know, as I said, I'm, this is my first time doing a Thursday event, so I'm definitely open to any suggestions and resources. But we want to do it. Um, as sustainably as possible. And so, yes, generally at our events, um, that is the protocol anyways. Um, you know, everything is supposed to be um, recyclable or, you know, compostable and very limited cutlery. We, we encourage people to bring their own, um, their own cutlery and to bring their own takeaway boxes and that sort of thing to make it as sustainable as possible. Um see do you have entertainment what's your your entertainment going to be um we are planning on having some um there might be some um uh, some demonstrations and some um some lectures and discussions and some q a we'd like to get some people some folks that are, are you know local experts in the community to provide some information on how how San Diego to live a more sustainable life and so i think that the entertainment would be as opposed to just your entertainment. So that, that, that is our plan um, in terms of having um, that sort of engagement. Okay, thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks, Makeda. Any other county member questions or comments or do we have a motion to approve staff recommendation? Barrow? Um, I just wanna say, I really like this event and I'll be there. Um, motion to approve it. Thanks, I will second that motion. I'll, I'll second it since I'm on. Perfect, motion by Bear, seconded by Howard. Victor, if you could call the roll. Molly Chase? Yes. Katherine Johnston? Yes. Howard Blackson? Yes. Dang Nguyen? Yes. Briar Marsh? Yes. William Aaron Jr. Yes. Michael Parson. Yes. Makeda Cheatham. Yes. Sarah Daw. Chris Eddy. Yes. That passes. With that, we'll move on to item 302, the San Diego Nice Guys Christmas event. Do we have any representatives still on? And do we have any public comment or any committee members? That, I think David is on. Hi, David Walters is here. Can you hear me? We yes. can. Thanks, David. Thank you. I appreciate your time. 
I'm the immediate past president of the Nice Guys, and it will be my pleasure to discuss our event and answer any questions you may have. Uh, the Nice Guys, by way of a brief history, were formed in 1979, so we just completed our 43rd year of existence. We are a 501c3 nonprofit uh, benevolent organization that provides a hand up, not a handout to needy families or individuals within San Diego County. What we try to do is get people back on their feet if they have fallen into a, uh, a crevice not of their creating that they need to get out of. So we lift them up and get them to a point where they can become self-sufficient again. Uh, all of our funding comes from fundraisers that, that we do. We have no paid staff or no rented office space. So every dollar that we raise goes to help someone in need in San Diego County. For well over 30 years, we've been holding our community Christmas event in the early part of December, where we invite between 850 and 900 families that we source through outreach to charities, to the military, to churches, to battered women's groups, to, to what have you. And we wind up with close to 3,000 people that show up at this event, which again is an invitation only event. So we control who goes in and uh, we have a basically a Christmas party uh, or festival uh, we have uh, we, we cook food for them. We have exhibitors that are third party exhibitors that come and provide experiences for the guests. Uh, we have Santa Claus and the Grinch and Mrs. Claus and the tent, and we have uh, toy giveaways and and uh, flu shots and and uh, therapy pets and wheelchair chair dancers and on and on and on. It, it's a great time. We love it. They love it. Uh, we have live musical entertainment on a stage. And at the end of the event, they leave with their bellies full, their arms full of giveaways. And, and before they leave, we give each family two bags of groceries, a turkey, some produce, and a $100 gift card per family uh, to try to make their holidays brighter. Uh, we've been having trouble with having this full-on event since COVID and the teardown of the San Diego Stadium to build Snapdragon. Uh, we were holding it in the San Diego Stadium parking lot for many, many years. And so uh, now that we have found Inspiration Point with, through the help, and we're grateful, the help of the Parks and Recreation Department and so forth, uh, to find that, uh, we feel that it will meet our needs for the amount of space we need to hold our event. We are going to remove the uh, carnival rides, which there will be no room for those. Uh, we're not going to have Santa flying in a helicopter for security That's reasons. Fine. Uh, but other than that, we're going to have pretty much our, our normal event. Uh, your staff has recommended it for approval. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Thanks so much, David. Really appreciate the context on the history and, and the layout of the event for this year. Do we have any um, public comment? Johnny, I didn't see that. No. No, any public comment. Perfect. With that, I'll go to Chris. I would move to approve the event. And I will second. Motion by Chris, second by Will. Victor, if you could call the roll. Molly Chase. Uh, yes. Catherine Johnston. Yes. Howard Blackson. Yes. Dang Nguyen. Yes. Briar Marsh. Yes. William Aaron Jr. Yes. Micah Parson. Yes. Makeda Cheatham? Yes. Sarah Daw? Yes. Chris Eddy? A resounding yes. Thanks no. so much. That passes unanimously. Uh, we have no workshop items this evening, so we will move on to our final item and our only information item, which is item 501, Bicycle and Shared Mobility Parking Expansion Locations. Lloyd Ahmad is here from Sustainability and Mobility Department. Yes, good evening. Thanks for uh, having me. Can everybody hear me? Yep. Thank you, uh, Molly. Good, good evening to all of you, to the chair, to the uh, committee members, and to the audience. Uh, my name is Ahmad Arikat. I'm the City's Shared Mobility Program Coordinator. I would like to share uh, an informational item with you on an update related to the expansion of shared mobility and bike rack uh, parking within the Baba Park. I have a small presentation to share with you. Just one moment. Can everybody see the presentation? Yes. Yes, thank you. 
So uh, I'll try to keep this short and sweet. I know we're uh, almost out of time, but uh, as a part of the city's effort to provide a system of mobility options around Balboa Park, the proposed improvements to the parking and shared mobility facilities within the park are meant to establish improved connections to the park for various users. With new bikeways, under, with new bikeways uh, underway along Park Boulevard and the recently completed bikeways along 4th and 5th Avenue, it's important to not just have dedicated facilities for those traveling by bike to get to and from the park, but to also have a secure place for visitors to park their bicycles. Uh, this map shows the 20 locations within the park where we currently have bicycle parking facilities. We anticipate having more people arriving on bike once the Park Boulevard bicycle facilities are complete. Our field survey in October revealed that many of the existing bike parking facilities available in the park are actually outdated, and additional locations are needed to ensure access throughout the park. As you can see, many of the existing bike parking is centrally located along El Prado. However, we would like to provide bike parking near all of the destinations throughout the park, such as the cultural institutions, museums, tram stops, and other park amenities. Similar to the existing bike parking map, this map shows the shared mobility parking, also known as uh, corrals. There's a limited amount of corrals available in the park compared to the demand of devices being used. We only have about 18 corrals currently, currently available within the park. In 2021, there were over 220,000 shared mobility trips that originated or ended within Balboa Park. And we need additional facilities to ensure the availability of devices and the proper staging of shared mobility devices in designated spaces within the park. The availability of shared mobility devices is important because it increases access to the park, reduces demand for parking within the park, and provides a cost-effective and convenient method of transportation for visitors. The top left photo that I'm showing here is uh, what a shared mobility corral looks like. At the bottom left are the decorative bike racks that exist currently at some places within the park. Uh, to the right is an example of a bike rack that the city, or a bike rack style that the city currently uh, installs throughout the city. It's green in color, so it will be consistent with what we have within the park. Since our previous presentation in October, city staff conducted field assessment and have identified 28 additional candidate locations for shared mobility and bike rack installations throughout the park. A map and locations list was shared with the group with the pictures and coordinates of each candidate location. We solicited feedback on the proposed locations and have not received any concerns from the committee members as of now. Uh, this slide shows an example of a section of the document that we provided. The document includes the coordinates for each location, a description of whether it's a location for a potential bike rack, a scooter corral, or both, and a picture we took while out there in the field doing the assessment. Since this information was provided to the committee in November, as I mentioned, we have not received any concerns. We have the list and map available as attachments to the agenda for this meeting, if anybody has questions or any other comments regarding these candidate locations. And I always like to remind that we, we do receive, uh, we're open to having receiving any ideas related to corral locations. And the email that we have established for that purpose is scooterideas at san diego.gov. And uh, we encourage you to always report any shared mobility related issue using the Get It Done app. Now, following this meeting, staff will work with the Parks and Recreation Department to begin installing these scooter corrals and bike parking facilities in the coming months. We're happy to come back to the group at a later time and provide a progress update on these installations if needed. With that, I'll defer back to you with any questions. Thanks so much. Do we have any uh, or public comment? Uh, Peter Kaminsky. Uh, good evening, Peter Kaminsky, Belbo Park Cultural Partnership. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, I would ask two questions. Uh, I know they're not to be responded, but I have two questions. Uh, the first is um, mindful of some of the entry spaces. I'm sure they've been considered. Last time this was looked at, um, some of these corrals were proposed to uh, to block entrances into Spanish Village in particular. I don't see that this time, but please just keep that in mind as we move forward. Thoroughly supportive. Uh, second is I'm a little disappointed with the bike rack personally. Um, I think the designed bike rack, bike rack in the park is beautiful, spectacular, and suits the nature of the park perfectly. Um, I'm not as keen on the 
you know, the N with Anaheim down the middle. So San Diego down the middle. I had the same problem in Anaheim, but with San Diego down the middle, uh, my only question is they haven't been fabricated uh, for the city to consider uh, at minimum uh, changing those over to, say, Balboa Park uh, instead of San Diego. Thank you very much. Uh, Nevo Magnesi. Hello. Um, thanks. I um, I actually uh, wanted to support uh, having the inverted U. Um, what it says in the middle, perhaps that's important. Just in terms of functionality, I think it's um, important to to uh, keep with the inverted U configuration because that's the kind that uh, people have the easiest time using. And I, I really wanted to support um, the location of some of these uh, racks and corrals uh, as anyone who uh, ever tries to bike, uh, park their bicycle or scooter uh, while going to Panama 66, they, everyone knows, you know, you can bring your bike into Panama 66 and you can put it next to one of the windows, but you can't block the door, otherwise they get upset at you. <laughs> so I'm, I'm happy to see uh, um, a bike rack near there and uh, at all the other uh, locations. So that way you can kind of um, have good access to all the institutions. Thank you. That's all. All the public comments right now. Perfect. Thanks. Any any member questions or comments? Uh, hi there. Thanks for this presentation. It's uh, obviously great to see micro mobility and bike uh, parking facilities coming in. I use both. My dad loves riding scooters because um, he can't ride a bike. So that's great to see that those are still being included. Um, I do have two comments. The first comment is uh, the area east of Florida Drive is also Balboa Park. Um, so don't forget that when you're looking at places for bike racks. Uh, and also, uh, while I see it's great that you have a, a, a scooter corral proposed up next to the zoo, the zoo has a very small bike rack. And it's been full several times that I've tried to go there and had to find other places to park. And I would just like to suggest that um, given the popularity of that attraction, that many more bike racks be provided up there uh, next to the zoo entrance. Um, and then the third, uh, I had a question. Did you happen to see the bicycle parking recommendations that were sent in by Bike SD? If it was sent to the uh, scooter ideas email, then we have, but I, I have not received anything else. Okay. And if, you have any, if you have anything that you could share with us, please do. I, I have a copy I can share with you. So please do. That's my only comments. Thank you for the presentation. Thank you. Howard? Uh, thank you. Uh, just a, a couple of comments that are related to everything else. Um, we talked about when we talk about design review uh, the last month, uh, the issues of design of bike racks were not available as a topic. Um, and yet, uh, I think a very good uh, discussion was happening about what the design of the bike racks. So um, um, I think once again, we need to understand that design is important for um, the uh, public facilities that are being brought into this public park. Number two, I'd just like to speak to the partnership people that that continue to um, we have to this fight between parking and and bicycles um the bicycles and scooters and this micro mobility is intended yes to help the people that live around the park downtown uptown north park golden hill to access the park without their cars on micro mobility so there's so that the park existing amount of parking spaces that are there today can be filled by people that are coming from much further away as well as transit facilities that allow for people to come even further away and nearby within you know three to ten miles so i really part of the problem that we have in talking about these 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 um projects piece by piece by piece and i think michael was alluding to this is that we don't have a clear mobility plan and we need a clear mobility plan. It's time to update our plan. Please let's update our plan. Let's update our bylaws. Let's get a design review. We can do better. I don't even know. I, I, I believe 
it was presented a couple months ago, but I'd like to know the next slurry seal that's going on so that we're not caught in this time trap again that of another street that's going to have a slurry seal. Are we going to try some other kind of facilities that you know are made up on uh, on the spot so um th there's 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 a lot of education that's in here i really appreciate the understanding that bike parking is related to to street parking so thank you very very much things hard do we have any additional committee member comments knowing that this is an information item seeing none thank you staff for being here this evening and presenting the the new locations. Um, and with that, we will adjourn to our next meeting, which is February 2nd, 2023. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you. Happy New Year, you all. Good evening. Thanks, everyone. Bye.